So David Cameron stood on the steps of number mm. 10 and accused Labour of planning £3,000 tax rises for every working family. Not necessarily true, is it? Well, it is true. I mean, that is precisely what they're planning. The Labour Party makes no secret of the fact that they are planning to increase taxes. Oh, not uh, by and... that figure, though, because, I mean, the well, Institute they... for Fiscal Studies, independent, uh, has looked at this figure and said that Labour may need no tax increases or real-term spending cuts beyond those planned for 2015-16 at all. But they have voted in Parliament for £30 billion of savings or tax rises. Ed Miliband in the past has said half of that comes from tax rises, and that equals £3,000 for working families. But people well, know... Well, it doesn't, according to the IFS. Well, actually... and they say that if they're serious about that vote in Parliament, um, it would still only equal £6 billion spending cuts and tax rises. Mm. Roughly half might come from, from tax Kathy, rises. Kathy, there's a very clear choice at this election. You can either go with the leadership of David Cameron, the economic plan that has created a record number of jobs, that is delivering a tax cut for working people by raising the tax free threshold, that is delivering one of the strongest economies in the advanced world, or you can have the chaos and the tax increases and the debt of okay. Ed Miliband. But and let me you, bring you back to well, the specifics. Well, this, I'm this happy is, to answer specifics, something... but can I make a general observation? Okay, I, I promise think it, you've made the, the general the, the observation. The general observation David is this. Cameron said the on the doorstep of number 10, he used that figure of over £3,000 yes. tax rises. The IFS says there's little value in bandying around numbers. We don't know what they'll do after the election. And this is what brings politics no. into disrepute, doesn't it? Bandying around these figures that you can't then back up, and you haven't been able to back them up. I, well, I've just explained how we arrive at that figure. It's based on what the Labour Party has voted for and what what Ed Miliband has promised. And, you know, you talk about David Cameron being on the steps of Downing Street. I remember five years ago when he gave that speech as the new Prime Minister, and it was difficult to imagine a more terrible inheritance for a Prime Minister, the country on the brink of economic catastrophe. Five years later, we've got a record number of people in work. We've delivered economic security for families. The job's not done, but Britain is growing. And we can either continue with the plan that's working or okay. go back to the chaos of the past, back to the taxes and the debt and the spending okay. of Ed Miliband. And but that is say... the stark choice facing people. OK, and you say that uh, hard-working taxpayers, as, as you always call voters, have a right to know about Labour tax rises. Don't they also have a right to know about what welfare cuts you're planning? £12 billion pounds worth of them. Well, we've set out a balanced approach. It's about making sure our national debt, now it is set to fall as a share of our national income, continues to fall because that delivers economic security. It's about a package that involves getting more money from rich people who do aggressive tax planning. It's about saving money, and from about saving money in departments and saving cuts. money in welfare. And by the way, it's a plan that also delivers a tax cut for working people and puts real increases every year into the NHS. So okay. it's a balanced package. OK, but we only and know part, about £2 very, billion of those be, £12 billion pound welfare cuts. But it would be you very, announced them 13 months ago. We only know about £2 billion, billion of them yet. Kathy, Do you it'd agree it'd with your work and pension secretary, who says that it's not relevant to tell voters what's on the way? It, it would be an incredibly unbalanced package if you left out the welfare budget, which is a very, very big part of what government spends. So people know we've made savings in this parliament, and as a result, We've got a record low number of workless households. Inequality is down. Okay. Child poverty is down. I, We've got I, a record I agree with number you. The welfare going... budget is very important, yeah, but, the, but that's why people want welfare to know reforms... what's going to be but cut our, from our, the welfare budget. Our... Do you agree with yeah. the Work and Pension Secretary that it's not relevant yeah. to tell voters Kathy, I'm ta what I'm explaining is that our welfare reforms in this parliament, which save £21 billion, have delivered a fairer society so where more people billion? are in work. So 12 billion in the context of 21 is perfectly achievable. We've but given examples. We've given examples. And when will we know about them? Well, I've given you examples. Well, I've given you, the, I'm sorry, you've given 4, two billion a pounds worth of examples. Well, that, that What's, is, where's that is, the 10 billion extra coming from? That is literally 10 times more detail than you've had from any other party in this election. And we've got a track record. So people are we know get, we can do this fairly. Are we gonna, you, and you the alternative is uncontrolled welfare rising taxes, rising okay. debt, all the things that Britain had five years ago okay. when there were millions of people looking I get for work. That. But neither the Prime Minister nor Ian Duncan Smith knew where the full extent of those 12 billion cuts were going to come from. I'm sure, as, as Chancellor, you know, don't but you? But we will set out our plans as part of a spending review and you can make these balanced After the judgments. Election. We will After set the it in the spending uh, review in the summer. But we have, A, a track record of real welfare reform. B, we have future plans including specific examples like freezing working age benefit, but also rolling out our new universal credit so more people okay. have the incentive to work. These things so, are the foundation stones of economic security okay. so what for can people you say? watching this programme who 
don't have to worry, as they did five years ago, about yeah. a country on the brink of bankruptcy, but there will be, there will mass be, unemployment, okay. a real concern I'm, about Britain's economic future in the world. We have, we're okay. in a much more secure position, and the welfare reforms have contributed to that. OK, you talk about people watching this programme. There will be disabled people watching this programme who are worried that their benefits might get cut. What can you say to reassure them? If you them? look at what we've done with disability benefits, in this parliament, so judge us by our record, we actually have increased the payments to the most disabled people. And you'll people carry on doing that? Through our personal independence payments. You'll carry on doing that? Well, of course. You, you, you know our values are to protect the most vulnerable. And you can judge us by our so record. So no cuts to disability well, benefits in the can, next parliament? People can judge us by the approach we've taken, the values we have. We and that means we no cuts to disability most benefits. We've actually, in this parliament, Increased payments to and the most disabled people. And that will carry on. No people. cuts to disability that benefits. That reform in the next is rolling out into the next parliament. And again, it's important that you see this as part of a balanced package that is delivering jobs in our country, that is delivering economic security in our country, that is getting our national debt now falling as a share of national income. All of these things are at stake okay. in this general election. Right. If people want to go back to the chaos of the past, back to the policies that Ed Miliband and Ed Balls and Gordon Brown and the like foisted on this country five or six years ago, that's when the okay. poorest suffer. They're the people and who the suffer N when the economy fails. And the NHS, the Health Secretary, promised an extra £30 billion a year by 2020 over this weekend. That implies an extra £8 billion of spending. Is that a cast-iron commitment from We're you? absolutely committed to the NHS. But committed £8 to billion re pounds committed extra to real increases year. every year and committed £8 to... £8 billion? Fund pounds? Well, not, not a to, commitment. We are committed to funding the NHS's own plan for its future, put together by Simon Stevens. And again, we had a choice five years ago. We could have cut the NHS, and there were lots of people urging us to do that. But no, we increased funding on the NHS. It is part of our balanced package a package that has delivered economic security, a record number of doctors and nurses in our NHS, economic opportunity for families, and does Britain want to go back to the chaos of the past? I don't think so. Is, at this election, is it a question of vote Cameron, get Osborne? Well, you, Cameron, David Cameron, leads a great team, and I'm very fortunate to be part of it. And he's name-checked you as a potential successor, and Ian Duncan-Smith, the Work and Pension Secretary, says that there will be a leadership contest in the next parliament. Well, as I say, David Cameron leads a great team and he has said he's going to serve a full five years as Prime Minister. That's the, the, but you agree that there will be a contest I'll tell you what's in the, on the I'll tell you what's on the ballot paper. It's David Cameron or Ed Miliband. That's the choice facing voters in 38 days' time. And I think if you look at what our country needs, the strong leadership, the economic competence, the ability to make that crucial judgment call at three o'clock in the morning that protects our national security. Ask yourself, is Ed Miliband up to it? Even the Labour Party doesn't think he's up to it. But, but you agree, is, that's do That's the choice. But, that's the big choice okay. facing the country. And the, yeah. uh, but David, can I just ask you, do you agree that the implication of David Cameron saying that he won't serve a full, he'll do a second term but not a third term, means that there will be a contest in the next parliament? Uh, David Cameron said what I think is enormously commonsensical, which is I, he, he said he didn't want to go on being Prime Minister for more than 10 years. Can you imagine if he hadn't said that? You'd be saying, this guy wants to go on and on and on. Yeah, I think he's being absolutely reasonable. But the choice of this election is David Cameron or Ed Miliband. And David Cameron, full five years, delivering economic recovery, job security, opportunity okay. for families, or the chaos of Ed Miliband. You've been on your diet. You've had a new haircut. Are you the man to take on Boris? Can you beat Boris? <laughs> Boris Johnson, myself, and the other Conservatives are part of a great team. And that's the choice. You've got David Cameron and an economic plan that is working, or Ed Miliband and economic chaos. That's the stark choice. Remember where this country was the last time David Cameron gave a speech like that in front of 10 Downing Street. Think where the country is today. We don't want to go back 